Hey guys, in this video, we will be looking at some advanced querying techniques. So yes, we went through some select in previous videos and we went through some filtering and other uh, more advanced topics. But then when it comes to having multiple tables and, and shared data across the tables, we need to employ certain other SQL commands and functions in order, in order to facilitate that kind of query. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new query window and we can select our database to be used, which is school. And of course, I always say use school above here in the script so that we can be absolutely sure even if we move it to another computer that we're using the right database. All right, so let's start off by running a few selects. So we select star from teacher and we have three tab four tables, so I'm just going to, and I'll just control C and V, and that will actually duplicate this line. And I'm just going to run these, sorry, not school, courses and students. All right, now if, if I have these three commands and I say execute, it will actually execute all three and give us different results for each, the different result panes. And remember that you can always just highlight the one that you want to execute and it will give you just that. Now I want to run a select star from my enrollments table. And we saw how messy and confusing that looked. So I'll do that. Oh, uh, oh sorry, I left out the from. That's embarrassing. So execute. And then we see that we have all of these numbers and literally they mean nothing to us sitting down and looking at them because all we have to do now is go back and we have to try and find who is teacher two. And then we go back and find out who is student three. And that backing and forth thing is really just tedious and absolutely not necessary because in SQL, we have a construct called joins. So we can do joins in our queries, all right? So this script file will be included in the resources for this video. And I'm going to show you how you can go about doing a join. A join pretty much says, I want to literally join the data from two different tables based on the one thing that they have in common. And based on the fact that we just went through relationships and foreign keys and primary keys and those constraints, we can always assume that what the two tables have in, in common would be the value in the primary key and the value in the foreign key. All right. So the value in the foreign key column for enrollments is what is, is something that it has in common with the teacher table, right? Or in the student ID with the student table. All right. So the syntax for a join is you say select. So the select part stays the same, star from, and you can choose your primary table, enrollment, since that's the real table. We want to see the details of all of these enrollments. We want to see which teacher is teaching this course. So who is teacher two? We want to see the details of teacher two on all the courses that teacher number two is teaching. So we select star from enrollments, and then we say, inner join and you have multiple joins you see inner you see left you see right but for now let's just do inner and you say which table is, is it that you want to join the data onto which table is it that you want to look for the details in so we want the details of the teacher id too so obviously the details of anything from teacher id would be in our teacher table so we say teacher and then we want to say on so join on teacher table on the condition that which column from teacher the column is id and remember that what they have in common is the value in the id column of the teacher table and the teacher id column of the enrollments table so inner join this new table teacher on the condition that the id from teacher table and you can always say something like teacher dots just to make sure you're dealing with the right one in case both of them have the same name all right so you can say teacher dot and then it, the intelligence is asking you which column is it and we already wrote id is equal to and i can just say enrollments dot and i will say teacher id and then what this will do is say give me everything from enrollments and also join on the details from the teacher table 
where the ID matches that. So it will bring back the details for teacher two where teacher two matches the ID in teacher table. It will bring back all of the details for teacher three where those two values match, etc. So that is why if we had 10 in the enrollments table as the teacher ID, it would cause a problem because we don't have, those would never match, all right? So when I run this query, now we see, and I said select star, now we see that the details are coming back. So for teacher ID two, once it's two in the enrollments table, then it's bringing back the corresponding record for two. Where it's three in the enrollments, it's bringing back the corresponding records for three. And the same goes on and on. So teacher one, teacher one. So we can now see which teacher is actually teaching these courses. But we have more details that we need to see because we don't know the student IDs, we don't know the courses. So I can inner join as many tables as I need to. So I can now go ahead and inner join. And let's say we want the student details alongside the teacher details. And then I can say the student ID. So student ID is coming from the students table. And I'm going to inner join that on the condition that students so that, that's another thing. See, I have teacher and then I have students and then of courses. So it's good to just keep those things um, uniform. So that's that's my design flaw right there. And then students dot ID is equal to enrollments dot. And in this case, I want students uh, student ID. And then I can execute this again. And what will happen is that you'll see now that the Teachers details are still there. And then to the right, it's appending columns for the students. So where there's student ID three, we're seeing the details for the students. All right. And I'm going to do it one more time. And at this point, it's probably less or more confusing because at least we're seeing the details now, but then we're seeing all of these irrelevant information because we don't need to see the IDs. And for a situation like this, we probably don't want to see the date joined and the date of birth of the student. I know I'm going to tackle on the course and we'll see more possibly irrelevant data. So we'll go ahead and refine that as we go along. So I'm just going to you know, join courses on and what do courses, what does the courses table have in common with our enrollments course ID. Now remember, I did state that it could get confusing when you have the same name across two tables. So in this situation, it would be extremely good to say courses dot course ID. So we know exactly which table this course ID is coming from versus which table the other one is coming from. So enrollments dot. And then we can go ahead and do this and we'll see we're getting back all of the courses and the number of credits and the course code. So we're getting back all the details of everything. So that is why I'm saying that we don't need to repeat the details in more than one tables, right? Because if we have all the details or at least the repetitions one place, we can always cross reference it with another table. And in a setting where you're selecting, then repetition is quite fine. What you don't want is a repetition when you're storing. All right, so you don't want to have John McDonald five different places in five different tables. You just have his details one place and you make reference to him by his ID. And so when you need to find more details on him, you just interjoin that table with his details based on that foreign key, primary key relationship that you would have set up. So we can start refining this a bit. So I'm, I'm going to leave this query. And I'm going to write another one where we're going to select the specific columns that we actually want for our report. Now, I did start off by saying we only wanted the, the, the courses being taught by John Gibson. So I want to bring back John McDonald, sorry. So we only want to bring back where the teacher ID is too. We want to bring back the first and last name of the lecturer as well as the student's first and last name and the title of the course being taught. All right, so that's all we want. So we can actually go ahead and I'll just copy these inner joins since I already have them here, but it would be good if you just retype them for practice purposes. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and select the specific columns. And then this is where this querying kind of becomes more tedious because then you'll see that first name 
is present in two different tables. So we need to be very specific which first name it is that we want where. All right, so if we want a first name, last name, and then first name, last name again, whose first name is it, whose last name is it, the students or the teachers, those kind of things. So what is a common practice in database design is aliases, where when you have a table, um, you can actually just press space. So in this inner join line here, I have teacher, I'm just going to press space, and I'm going to say something like T, all right? And students, I'm going to call them S, and courses, I'm going to call it C. And what this does is wherever we would have said teacher dot some column, we can actually just say alias dot that column, alias dot that column, alias dot that column. So this makes writing the query much easier when, when, we, when it comes to this situation. So we don't have to write out teacher dot first name and then write student dot first name. We can just say T dot first name. And sometimes the intelligence may not necessarily chip in for this part. So I'm just going to run the first query with this. So select T dot first name from, and I'm just going to say enrollments. And even this can get an alias right here. I can just say E. All right, so everywhere I had the word enrollments, I can replace it with E. And so this query just shrunk in size. Look at that, look at the difference there, all right? So once you have that table, you can just press space and put on that alias. And then I'm just going to run this query quickly. So when I bring this back, I should only be seeing John or whatever is in the first name column of lectures coming back. And there we go. So first name is what is coming back and only the teacher first names because we did specify this alias and we're reusing it here. I did say, and let me just rerun this query. I did say that we would be bringing back the first and last name of the teacher. And then that now brings up another problem because if I'm only saying first name, last name, first name, last name, I still don't know who is who. So I have to put an alias on the column itself so that it prints back. So teacher, first name and i'm just going to do this i'm going to break the line and just do it in a cascading form so teacher first name comma let's move this to the next line i like i like my queries being very readable so it's good when you have readable queries and i can just duplicate this since um, a lot of this is going to repeat last name all right so see the intelligence is chipping in now because it has realized that okay t is uh the teacher table set as t right so remember that as keyword we could have used as so last name and i'll just say last name here and the reason for the square brackets is that because we have spaces in between what we want as a column headers um sql we're telling sql just take it literally as it is without that it would try to create certain keywords out of it so we're saying don't use any keywords just state this literally as we have it typed. So we have the teacher's first name and last name, and we also want the student's first name and last name. So as I said, we can just duplicate these lines because it would repeat and we just refine. So student, student, and this would be last name. And then finally, and remember we use commas for every column separation up until the last column. And finally, we want the course title so of course would have the alias c so i can just see c dot title and then we can give it a custom header course title and th this is as this is essentially how you go about running reports you know you're working in an organization they ask you to pull a report directly from the database this is how you would go about writing these queries when you have multiple tables with multiple data across the place you know you just find out what they have in common, write up your inner joins, and then select the data that is absolutely necessary to the report that the person asked for. Because if your superiors ask for this report, you really don't need to show them the IDs and the, you know, the course code. Maybe you want the course code. So let's, let's include course code. So I'll just duplicate this, add that comma, and I'll say C dot course code, and this is course code. All right. And then also when you're when you're going to be rendering reports, you don't want messy names. You want something human readable. I think we went through this when we went through our select queries. You want to make sure that the person can read it. You know, it looks neat. 
So we just try to keep some uniformity and some quality, some standard, because your supervisor or whoever is reading the report won't see a database, not all the time, so they won't know that enrollment date is here as one word in lower caps. But at least when they get it in a dump, in a, you know, in a presentable form, you want it to look good. And so we run this query and we see teacher first name, teacher last name, student. So we can clearly distinguish who is who. And we see that John is teaching Jody. Oh, I have an error here because I have Jody appearing in last name and first name. So I can just correct that. And I didn't change that. All right. So we can just re-execute this. And that's why it's good to check your work. <laughs> So we have John McDonald teaching Jody McIntosh and all of those course titles. And then if we only wanted to see John's students, which is the way I think we started off, then we can add a where clause. So we went through the where clause when we looked at filtering on our where queries. Um, and the condition would be, it could be that the lecturer's first name is maybe John, but I wouldn't do it that way. Um, I would prefer to filter on the ID. So I would say ID is two. All right. So if, I mean, maybe a supervisor came to you and said, hey, find all the students that John is teaching. You know, if you said John, maybe you have more than one John's in the database. So you, she, maybe in the conversation, you know, it's John McDonald that is being spoken of. But if you just try to do it on that, then you may have more than one John McDonald's in your database. So the ID is the most unique thing to separate the two John McDonald's that might be in your database. So I would just find what is the ID of the specific person being asked for and it is two in this case. So I'll just say where t dot id using my alias is equal to two. And so this will actually go ahead and filter everything out just to show me John McDonald's and all of his students. So you see that Jody is taking HTML, SQL, PHP with him. Patro is doing HTML and PHP and Trisha is doing SQL and Petra is also doing SQL. And those are the course codes as you go along. So of course, there are, there are different ways to run this kind of report and cut out all of these repetitions and refine it. But at the end of the day, you want to ensure that you have a good understanding of how you go about doing your inner joins when you have relationships, how you bring back data from different sources, and finally, how you go about filtering. Now, the filtering, the where clause should most often than more often than not be last all right so we could have ordered by so you do an order by after all of this and let's say we want to order by a course title so we say c dot and we can say title so we want to order by the title and that would come after you where and then here we have okay john is teaching patroy and jody in HTML, he's teaching those, those are his PHP students and these are his SQL students. So based on the way you order data, you can get different things from it because we know it's John all the time, um, but then the students seem are seemingly random and all over the place, but at least we can now say, who are his HTML students? He has two, who are his PHP students? He has two and he has three SQL students. And so, once again, based on how you write your query, you can get different data from it and you want it to be nice and clean and ready for export. So if we want to export this, we can always just right click and we can say save result as, and then we choose the data type that we're more comfortable with. So we can leave it as CSV because CSV can open in Excel. And then we just say student enrollment report. And then we save that and then we can send that off to our supervisors of course, the title didn't give the full story because it's really students and John enrollment, John students and enrollments really and truly based on the data we have here. So this script file will be uh, included in the resources for this video. Stick around. See you next time.